Hi folks, a few months ago I did a video on this channel all about the best Canon DSLR cameras that you can buy used right now for your sports photography. And that video did create quite a bit of interest and it also generated some great interactions in the comments. Now, one of the things that kept recurring in those comments and also a few people that reached out to me directly through social media was that people wanted the same again, but for camera lenses. And so, as you probably guessed it, this video is all about the best Canon used lenses that you can buy right now for sports photography. Now I'm going to start with telephoto zoom lenses and there's a couple in this category you should consider and I'm going to start with the one that was the first one I bought for sport and is definitely my highest recommended lens to buy right now if you're a budding sports photographer. The Canon EF 70 to 200 mm f2.8 lens. This is an L series lens and it has that ultrasonic motor to help with the autofocus. In my opinion, if you're shooting action sports such as rugby, football, American football, cycling, tennis, all those types of sports, having a lens with really good telephoto zoom capabilities I think is really important. And I don't think there's any better out there than the Canon 7200mm f2.8 lenses. Now, the most recent version of these, I think, is the Mark III. But don't be shy about going all the way back to the Mark I and buying one of those used. Because if you get one that is still working and in good condition, it is going to be a super, super investment for you to make. Now, those Mark Ones I mentioned you can pick up now here in the UK, at least, used from around £500. Now, Eight, nine years ago, if you wanted one used, you were looking probably £1,000, best case scenario. So it has reduced and become a lot more affordable as newer models, as newer camera technology comes out. But the lens itself is still really, really good. I had one until mid last year when I upgraded to a Mark II. So it's a stellar lens. And what it's going to give you is really fast piece of glass that capable of shooting down on that aperture of 2.8. So when that aperture is wide open, that's gonna let more light in, which is gonna be really helpful if you are shooting those types of sports like football, where you are shooting through autumn and winter and in some really, really poor light conditions. In addition to letting more light in, that 2.8 aperture is also gonna give you a lovely bokeh or bokeh, depending on how you wanna pronounce it. That is the depth of field. And at 2.8, it's gonna be a really shallow depth of field, which gives you that lovely, blurry, creamy background that so many sports photos have. Um, and look so great for as well. Now, with the 70 to 200 mil focal length, what that's gonna give you is a real good opportunity to fill the frame with the action you are shooting. And in action sports photography, filling as much as the frame as possible with that subject is more often than not what you're aiming to do. And so at 70 to 200, you've got a really nice range in which to hit um, and, and hopefully fill that frame. It's also a great lens, so I shoot predominantly football, as you'll know if you follow this channel. Um, and what 7200 mil does, if you're sat off to the side of the goal, um, then that gives you a really good focal length and, and variation to get all the goal mouth action, shots, goals, tackles, and of course that celebration, hopefully, as the player runs past you. Also, if they do run a little bit away from you, getting up to 200 mil does give you that little bit further reach to keep that in shot. So it's really good for covering that final quarter or third of the pitch nearest to you. Now, obviously these lenses are a little bit pricey. The thing to note here is that there are alternatives within this price range, or sorry, not within the price range, but within this 70 to 200 mil sweet spot. Sigma certainly do lenses with that capability, uh, right down to 2.8 as well. I actually bought a Sigma 2.8 lens right before I bought my Canon Mark I lens. Um, but I think I bought a dodgy one off eBay. It didn't work very well. And after shooting one um, pre-season friendly with it, I put it back in the box the next day and, and returned it. Saved a little bit more money and went and bought the Canon equivalent instead. That's not to say some of the Sigma lenses. I know guys who shoot with a lot of Sigma glass and they really love them. So um, it might be worth checking out the Sigma equivalent if you need to do so to save a little bit more money. Similarly, while talking about alternatives, I think Tamron also do a lens in the 70 to 200 mil f2.8 variety that is meant to be pretty good as well. I think that's a Tamron 70 to 200 f2.8 
VC, I think is the lens. Um, that's meant to be pretty good. I've never used it myself, but again, if you're looking for, try and pick something up with these capabilities and these features that is a little bit more um, affordable perhaps, then certainly check those out and they might be a solution for you. Okay, next up is the Sigma 120 to 300 mil f2.8 DG OS HSM sports lens, and that is a mouthful. Uh, but the key thing to pull out there other than the focal length and the aperture is the fact that this is a sports lens described and made by Sigma specifically for sports shooters. Now, this has been out quite a number of years. Now, I do know two guys who have or used to certainly shoot with this. They got rid of it within uh, a year or so. I don't know why that might not, not might not be a reflection on the lens. Uh, I've only heard and read good things about it directly. Now, what the Sigma 120 to 300 will do is it's going to give you uh, a greater reach. So 300 mil is brilliant from a, a telephoto zoom lens, but at its widest, it's only at 120. So just be be conscious of that if that's going to be your only lens that you're using in a game or in a in whatever contest you shoot. If subjects do come close to you for a celebration or they score a goal or or something happens really tight to you, if 120 is the widest you can get, you are may you might have to work hard or be in um, real danger of missing out on that shot altogether. So I think that is something to consider. That said, this lens gives you really great um, variety. It gives you a little bit more flexibility in what you want to shoot while also sticking at that 2.8 aperture. So uh, check out these used. I think they're still brand new, probably a few thousand pound. I think I've seen them more around 1500 pounds used recently. Um, so certainly check those out. The last telephoto zoom lens I want to cover is the Canon EF 100 to 400 mil f 4.5 to 5.6 lens this is another l series lens so it is another one of canon's professional lenses i've used one once briefly before it wasn't mine it was it was borrowed um or tested should i say on behalf of another photographer who, who offered me to use it and the results were really really surprisingly good um i say surprisingly good i, I don't know why it's a surprise if it's canon l series lens it's going to be good um i personally wouldn't have this because at 4.5 being the lowest aperture what that's going to do is during the winter months, that's going to cut out a little bit too much light um, from the images. I struggle a lot in the games I shoot. The floodlights can be really poor. The visibility isn't great, especially when you are trying to take photos. And so um, I really need that 2.8 capability. However, the 100 to 400 mil is going to give you amazing versatility. So if you shoot mostly in good light or you shoot a real variety of different sports, maybe at athletics track and field for example and you need lots of different um, versatility with your focal length and you've only got one camera body this might be a really good option for you to look at okay let's move into the fixed telephoto prime lens and there's only two i'm going to cover here and i'm going to start with the biggest of them all the canon ef 400 mil f 2.8 l usmis lens uh, the latest version of this lens which is available in both ef and rf mount is I think retailing it in the UK right now at just over £13,000, which puts it way out of my price range and probably most people watching this video. And that's fine because actually the Mark One lens, which has been out years now, um, is still available. It is available used for a fraction of that price. Now it's still gonna be a big investment. I managed to pick mine up for two and a half thousand pounds, very fortuitously and a little bit risky off eBay. Um, not something I'd usually do, but um, I went for it because of the price and the condition, and a couple of years later, touch wood, I've got away with that. Now, you're probably looking more realistically around three grand and upwards, or 3,000 pounds and upwards, sorry, to get one of these used, certainly in the UK right now. Um, and the biggest difference between this and the one right now is the weight. Obviously, there are performance improvements, but the weight on the Mark One is a staggering 11.8 pounds, so nearly 12 pounds of weight just in the lens. You hook a body on that, you've got a significant size and weight to carry it around with you. But hey, that's why monopods were invented. So definitely with this lens and the one I'll speak about next, monopods are non-negotiable. Now the 400 mil is gonna give you amazing reach. It is also gonna give you razor sharp images, great autofocus. It's just a magnificent piece of glass. I, I adore mine, I took years and years to get up to the point where I was in a position to purchase it. Um, so none of this is overnight, none of this is gifted. It is literally work, 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 earn that money, save up and upgrade when the deals or the opportunities to do so come up. Um, 
in football, what it does is even if I'm covering the worst, most boring game, because of the 400 mil length, I can be shooting all game because I can get the midfield action, I can get the defence and the goalkeeper down at the other end of the field. So I can get so much additional action when I've got a 400 mil lens available to me as well. So I'd say this isn't as important as having that 70 to 200 mil lens. Again, this is all my opinion. There might be people out there who disagree with me and that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, like everything else, photography is opinions based. However, yeah, I would go for the 70 to 200 mil and then almost get this as a as an upgrade in, in the future, an additional um, lens in the future to stick on a second body. Plenty of videos on my channel about why I've got both a big 400 mil and a 70 to 200 mil. Check out the video link below um, about how to handle two lenses if you need any clarification on that. But the 400 mil is a super, super lens, if not very expensive and very heavy. And that leads me on to the Canon EF 300mm f2.8 lens, the equivalent of the 400mm, but a little bit shorter. Now, the 300mm is the first one I worked towards buying when I knew I was going to be able to have a second body. I wanted to have that longer piece of glass available to me in the way of a 300mm lens. Again, I was using this on a crop sensor, so actually it gave me phenomenal reach. Like the Mark 1 400mm, it's heavy, it's cumbersome, but the images it produces are absolutely superb. You'll see a lot of these that are loads of scratches and that around the outside, and that is because they are heavy, they've been used for years, um, and probably bashed it about a bit, but they're incredibly robust. They are L-series lenses, they're weatherproof as well. Um, so as long as all the components inside are working, when you buy these used, try and test it if you can beforehand. Um, as long as it is working and those images are sharp and the autofocus is good, and you haven't got any fungus or anything growing in the middle or mold, then don't be too cut up about what these look like on the outside. Again, the 300 mil is a brilliant piece of glass. It is cheaper than the 400 mil, so this might be a better initial um, entry point into the big fixed telephoto lenses if that's what you want to aim for. Okay, let's quickly touch on some primes and some wide angle lenses that you might also wish to add to your bag uh, if you can find a good price on them used. Now, first off, I'm gonna talk about the Canon 17 to 400 mil F4 lens it is a another l lens it is uh, ultrasonic motor ef mount lovely wide lens and a great i think it represents great value you can get these used in the uk right now for around 200 pounds and upwards depending on condition and i have this lens which is why i put it on this list because I've, I've used it for years and what or how i came to buy it was in a bit of a rush basically i needed an affordable ef mount lens for my new at the time 1d mark IV new to me it was obviously bought used um but i had a new kit shoot for tramia so the, the team i shoot for predominantly asked me to come and do the new kit um photo call for the new kit and get all that nice imagery but my wide angle lens i had at the time was an old efs mount it had scratches on it wasn't performing very well it just was a bit cheap and rubbish and i knew i was going to be working somewhere where the light wasn't great despite me taking some studio lighting with me etc so um, I rushed out and I bought the 70 to 17 to 400 mil lens and it did a great job and what it also does having it in my bag I think it's important to have a wide angle lens available to you because it gives you a lovely variation it lets you get all those general view shots before the game um, as well as maybe alternative wide angle shots of celebration if you can have that on a third body or second body um, in addition to your telephoto lenses. So that is a great option as a wide angle lens that is quite affordable as an entry point if you need the EF mount. The second one I'm gonna cover is a little bit more pricey. That is a Canon EF 16 to 35 F 2.8 lens. It is another L lens and it is gonna be slightly more expensive. I think used, you're probably looking at at least 400 pounds for this new K. You might get lucky and get it a little bit cheaper. Um, now, the reason I have used this lens, I've never purchased it, but I did hire one once, I paid to hire one. Um, I was asked to go and cover a European game at Anfield, so Liverpool uh, Football Club at home to, I think it was Man United in the Europa League quarterfinal or something like that. Um, and I realised that my, my wide angle at the time, so I still had that EFS mount, uh, lens I've just spoken about, it wasn't going to cut it for a big European night. I knew I'd want those big, dramatic wide angle photos of the cop with all the flags out that is a famous stand at, at that stadium they also do a team photo before the games in european games i'd want to capture that as well 
Um, so I needed a decent wide angle. So I went to a Canon store, sorry, a camera store in Liverpool and was able to hire this lens. And it was beautiful. What it, the, the image quality out of it was fantastic. It's 2.8, so it's a nice wide, quick lens. Um, and it's a great bit of glass. And if you can afford that for a wide angle lens, in addition to everything else you need for sports photography, I'd certainly recommend grabbing one. Okay, the final lens I wanted to cover in this video is the old Nifty 50. It's a Canon EF 50mm f1.4 lens. And this isn't specifically a sports lens, just like the wide angle one wasn't. And it's got no specific user case, I guess, in, in the case of sports photography or, or certainly the likes of football like I shoot. But you know what? It's a great, great lens to have in your bag. It takes up next to no room. It's cheap as chips when we're talking about lenses. And the quality out of it is sublime. It's great for portrait photography. In sport, you can use it for something maybe a little bit wider, give you a bit of variation if you're a bit bored of whatever you're usually producing. I met a guy once who shoots most games on a 50mm lens just because he says it's different to what every other photographer's producing. Who can argue with that? Um, it's a great bit of glass. Use, you can get these on eBay here in the UK right now. I've literally just this morning seen two for less than £50, which is crazy. Um, just watch, I think the earlier models were more metal, whereas the more recent ones are plastic. I've got a plastic one, the quality is fine. Uh, the images it produces are superb. So um, yeah, used, they're really, really cheap. Even brand new, you're looking at around 300, 350 pound there in the UK. So they are really, really affordable if you're after a new lens. And so that's it. I hope that was interesting. I hope it was helpful. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of you out there who disagree with me. Some hopefully agree with me. But regardless, hopefully it helps inform what lenses you're going to buy for your sports photography if you're shooting on Canon body.